<laughs> What's up, folks? Welcome to Rasay on Hell. Yeah, so last time we did assemble the Raspberry and we equipped it with the DAISY head PCB and we took a look at some software packages available uh, which are useful on a boat. This time we want to install the first package and we will take Kplex. Kplex, the Enmia multiplexer and we want to fulfill the task to receive ARS signals with the DAISY head. We want to forward these signals with the Raspberry itself to a tablet the tablet shall run a plotter software. We will use NV charts for that. And we want to see the ships on the plotter software on the tablet. So a lot to do. Let's start. So to run uh, Kplex, uh, we need an operation system on our Raspberry. And for this Kplex only scenario, it's enough to install the light version. So without the desktop environment, of course, we need to choose an SD card. You should have a SD card inserted at this point and you can write the information on your SD card. Um, this takes some minutes and will be verified afterwards. So we will just skip that. The advantage of the light environment is that you don't need the graphical part and this saves energy, of course. And yeah, so the verifying is at 100% and the SD card is ready. Um, you should now remove it, but uh, you should put it back in because when we want to use SSH, we can already enable this now. So after you did insert the SD card again, you will see the, see the root directory. And if you create a new file, a new text document, but you need to remove the, the extension txt and you name it SSH. And that's all, just rename it and put it on the root directory. SSH will be enabled uh, during the first boot up. So you don't need a keyboard or um, display attached, you can directly connect via SSH. So I will put this back now to the Raspberry and uh, power up the Raspberry connecting with Putty uh, on it. Um, you should do the same now. Afterwards, we can log in with the PI user and Raspberry is the default password. You should start Raspberry config first. Ah, the sudo is missing. So the command to do this with super user root writes. Let's accelerate this a bit. Um, I defined a host name so that we can identify it. And I just changed the language to my um, home country. Anything else, especially wireless LAN is kept off. Um, this is something we do later. On the WACMIT page, we will find the instruction for use. And in the instruction for use, we will find some commands um, to switch uh, Bluetooth off and um, change the UART mode. So um, you will find the wget command here. wget is a command to download something from the internet. So we will download this file, this UART control file. That's a script which will do some execute some commands. And when this is downloaded, you can't start this uh, directly. First, you need to use the change mod command. And this change mod command will uh, yeah, create the possibility, the access rights. So now with the sudo um, command, we are able to start the UART control script. And this will now change Bluetooth to off. It will disable the console on UART and UART mode or UART is now available on GPIO 14 and 15. But we need to reboot and there's even the reboot command. Um, so just copy it, paste it and let's reboot. And we should now install the screen. Um, this is a tool to access the serial port so that we can see if the daisy head is running. So we copy after reboot, we copy the install command. It's an apt-get command in. It will uh, download everything you need. You say yes and it will install screen. While it's installing, I will already copy this command. 
um, this is the connection on the serial uh, zero port. So that's our uh, daisy head with the uh, baud rate and we can do this right now. And this looks first a little bit odd because what you would see here is the um, the AIS information already. If it would receive something, currently it doesn't receive anything, you would see this here. If you press ESC, so escape, you will uh, start the debug mode. And now we could, for example, send, uh, so th that's first of all very good. If you see this, the daisy head is there, it's activated, you can reach it, so it's working. You can now change some configurations. What we will use later on is the test message. So I will just simple uh, press T for the test message. If you press enter, it sends a default message. And you will see this uh, message also on the output. Every five seconds, there's this AIS message. The default message is a position in the western part of the US. Um, we can change this message, but for, for testing, it's uh, absolutely fine. Um, you could close now the complete window because otherwise, or you don't need to close the window, you can press Control A, you see nothing, you press K, and you kill screen. So now in the background, the testing is going on because we didn't stop it. And when we start screen again, we will notice that on the screen part, um, the com commands will be shown because the Raspberry on the background is still in testing mode. Um, so that's that's necessary to close it when we later on want to access the civil because otherwise it's occupied. So I will start the debug with escape again. I will, yeah, the testing mode is now disabled, so I uh, press escape again to return to AIS receive mode and we are in normal operation mode. Closing it um, is, oh, we, we did receive a real command. That's a real command. So there is something uh, yeah, nearby sending information. Interesting. So um, we see already now uh, some real information from a boat. Anyway, um, that's that's the setup of the Daisy Head PCB. It's working. Our next step is to install Kplex. Now we are on the Kplex page and you can see the download for the Raspberry and this is a link and um, yeah, you can download this now and copy it on the Raspberry, but it's easy to use the wget command again and download this directly. And then we need the uh, dpkg executable to um, install the dev file. There should be an S for sudo and now um, the Debian file is installed. And we need to configure Kplex. There's a configuration file into, in the etc directory, and this is called kplex.conf. And we will use uh, nano, the editor nano, to edit the file. Um, there is already a pre-configuration in which is, isn't too bad. So we will remove the commenting here for the serial because um, that's already correct. Uh, the file name is wrong. We use the serial zero. This is the right one. Um, as this is only uh, one direction uh, and the direction is in, we change this. Board rate is correct. And that's already the configuration, but we can give it a name and we call it AIS just to identify it. Second part is to set up our TCP mode. Um, we use it as a server and we will keep the default port. And this is now a direction which we just use for out because um, we, we will just forward data. Up to now we have wireless LAN off, so we will forward this data on our normal ethernet port which is connected to, to an access point usually so the normal raspberry port save it quit and you're good to go best thing now is to create a service so to make kplex a service this is the command to get this done and now kplex is available as a service you can see this by just simply using the service status all command and you will see that kplex is 
there is the service it's currently still off so we will start Kplex now oh the first the program or the service last start and let's check the services again and we will see that Kplex is running so that's fine however as soon as you need to work again for example with the debug mode and you need to access the serial port again um, you might need to stop Kplex yeah so because Kplex is currently connected to our daisy head and uh, if we need to access it again you might need the stop command um, yeah to get uh, this accessible again so I did start NV charts now it's in, in German but uh, if you go to settings and GPS AIS there is the lower part this and mere information and mine is set to the second one so I did put my raspberry address on and the port which we did configure and you see it's connected and uh, working and I can see some data here so um, here are some ships on the channel currently so I can select the ship and I get some information underway using engine and so on if you don't have any ship nearby um, you can use what I did uh, show before so you can change to the test mode we we might do this now so I uh, did stop Kplex we will now um, start the screen command again we start the test mode by entering the T and enter we will quit by control A and K and we will start the Kplex again so it did already connect to my tablet you can see the C and the debug window and, uh, and you, you still see the old informations because it's not di deleted directly but I know where the test information is so I will zoom out and when we switch over from Germany to the US there should be and I think I can't um, receive this without this test command of course there should be a little dot there as I said on the west side and this is the test information which we uh, get when we enable the test command so this is something you can always use to check your settings even though you have no AIS sources nearby all right that's it um, when everything is working like it should um, you can in this case we just will simply stop Kplex we will uh, of course turn off the test mode that's important still test mode normal receiving mode um, again control A and K and now we can um, start the service again so the Kplex service and we are done however this setup currently just works in a private network we need a DHCP server providing the addresses um, currently also our DNS server and everything uh, we have a Raspberry which is connected currently wired with this and a Wi-Fi connection with the tablet and the router this is not the setup we want to use we want to get rid of this router on a boat so our target is to get this raspberry here the tablet there and a wi-fi connection between these two only and that means this one will be the dhcp server and we will yeah we will create a different network for that and uh, start this up as an access point with DHCP server and then this one will of course also get the IP address from the DHCP server we could also add an LTE stick here for 4G to have this as an internet access point later on but the first step and the important step is that we get rid of this central unit here so we can work with this on a boat 
standalone. But I think that's something for the next tutorial, right? So thank you for listening and see you on the next one.